Hi everybody, welcome back. We have another lesson today. Let's do some letters and sounds and we'll write a sentence together. So I'm gonna have you grab all your dry erase supplies and I'm gonna write right along with you today so we can practice our letter formation and make sure we're hitting all the correct lines. Okay, so let me hang tight here one minute while you grab your dry erase supplies. All right, is everybody ready? All right, so our first word, let's spell the word pin but then we're gonna change it just a little bit to make a different word. So if I'm spelling the word pin, p-i-n, pin, which letter should I start with? P, good work. So when we do our lowercase p, there's no reason for an uppercase p here. We're not starting a sentence, we're just writing some words. So our lowercase p, remember, it starts at the plain line and it goes all the way down to worm. Come right back up and give it a bump. Great job, so p, i, i, which vowel says i, i. I, good job. I, itch, i. Good work. P, i, n. What do we think for our final sound? N. N, good job. All right, so n goes from sky to grass and comes right back up and makes a bump. Pin, i, n, pin. Awesome job. So let's change this word just a smidge. What if I didn't want the word pin, but I wanted the word pine, like a pine tree? Those are those trees you can use for Christmas time. You often see those in the winter, pine trees. So I, mm, I need the I to become a long I instead of a short I that says I. I need a long I that says I, it says its name. What letter would I need to add to this word pin to make it say pine? What do we think? N-E, great job, right to the end. That's our silent E, it's our sneaky E. What else can we call it? Just the E that is at the end of the word and it makes me have a long vowel? You got it. So I, N, your E is gonna go right halfway in between the plane and the grass. Remember, we make a straight line and we make a C. There's the word pine. We started with pin, we added an E, and now we have pine. Good work. All right, let's leave a finger space. And then next word, I'm gonna throw in a digraph here and I'm gonna have you remember the silent E rule, the sneaky E. So what if I wanted to spell the word wine? Hey, guess what? It rhymes with pine. Wine. Ooh, you know what I'm thinking? This is interesting. There's actually two different ways to spell the word wine, and they mean two different things. Have you ever seen an adult have a special glass of wine on a holiday? That's spelled one way. That's not the word I was thinking about. I was thinking about like when a baby cries, you hear a wine. That actually is spelled a little bit different. So let's work with this word and then I'm gonna tell you the difference between the two in just a minute. I just thought of that when I said the word wine. So this one has a digraph, I'm gonna give you that clue. Which digraph says wa wa? W-H, okay, so let's leave my finger space and let's do W-H, W goes at a diagonal from plane to grass. It makes a V for just a minute and then we're, there's my V for just a minute. And then it's going to make one more V by going down and up. All right, so we have our W and then we need our H. H starts up at the skyline, comes all the way down to grass, and it gets a hump, just like the letter N. Good job. So this wine, like somebody crying and making a lot of whiny noises, WH is the digraph it starts with. Wah, I, I. I wonder what vowel says I. What do you think? I. I'm just gonna have to do something in just a minute. Wa, I, n. Which letter says n? And good job. All right, and we have one last thing to do. Just like the word pine, wine, if I have that long I sound, I can't just leave it like this. If I left it like this, it would actually say wa, i, n, win. Babies don't win. Babies whine. How do I make it say that long I sound? I add that E at the end. Good job.
Awesome job. Okay, so we spelled two words. We're gonna do one more word and then a sentence together. So here's our last word. I don't know if we've done this one together yet because there aren't too many words that start with the beginning sound that I'm about to do here, but I wanted to play around with it a little bit. So I'd like us to spell the word quick. He's really quick when he runs. All right, so let's leave a finger space here. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I noticed that my papers weren't lined up and look, I have a floating N and a floating E. That might make me a little crazy. Let me fix that real quick. My dry erase papers weren't lined up correctly. There we go. Okay. So now I'll leave a finger space here and I'm going to spell the word quick. Well, when I say quick, qua, qua, which sound or which letter makes the sound qua? Wah. Q U. Remember, Q is the letter all by itself, but whenever you spell a word that starts with Q, you need the U. There is no word that you can start with a Q and it doesn't have a U after it. Isn't that crazy? Who came up with that rule? All right, Q. So Q is actually going to start like a C that turns into an A for just a minute and it's going to go down to the worm line and give it a hook to the right. There you go. So we have our Q, and then next it has to be a U. Well, U is kind of easy. We start right at the plane line, swoop around the grass, give it a little tail. All right, so there's our qua, qua. Then I need I, 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 qua, I. I, good job. Qua, I, k is my final sound. K. Hmm. Which one do I pick? Well, let's think about this for a minute. They all make the k sound, but this happens to be falling at the end of a word. Does one of these three options, C, K, or C, K, does one of those options make a little bit more sense? C, K. CK is a digraph that is specifically found at the end of a word. So if you're ever guessing what k is at the end of a word, the very, very last sound of a word, it's probably CK. Not always, probably. All right, so C starts at plain, swoop around the grass. And then my K, K is going to be a little goofy. I'm going to go from sky to grass. All right, lift up my marker for just a minute. About halfway in between the plain line and the grass line is where I start. And I make one diagonal line up to plain. I make one diagonal line down to grass. Awesome job, friends. So you spelled a bunch of words. You spelled pin, and then we turned it into pine, wine, and quick. These are some really big words. Good for you. You ready for our final task? We're going to write a sentence. I better erase these because I don't have much room. You may have enough room on your paper to not erase. Your choice, I'll leave it up to you. Just give me one minute to erase my words here. And actually, here's what I'll do. Let me tell you the sentence we're gonna write because you can get started if you want to while I'm erasing. So friends, the sentence we're going to write is, she likes to sit on the deck. Doesn't this sound just like what's happening now? People are outside on their docks or their patios or just sitting on their lawn. I love this time of year. It's so nice out. All right, so she likes to sit on the deck. She likes to sit on the deck. Seven words. We got this. All right, when you start a sentence, what do we need to do first? Our letter needs to be uppercase. Okay, and our first word is she. Sh, he, she. All right, let's make our uppercase S. And I said sh, so I need to S and a what? H. All right, so she, sh, 
E. Well, if all I hear is an E, what should I probably do? Put an E. Yeah, and this is one of your sight words. I think it's one of your first grade sight words that you repeat in first grade, if I recall correctly. So she, space, likes. Well, we know the word like. How can I make like into likes? I had an S to it. Yeah, all right. So let's see if we remember how to spell like. Ow. I, and then a K, and then a E. Good job. All right, so that's just the word like, and I want she likes. So I need to ask at the end. Good job. She likes two. You know how to spell two. That's one of our sight words. Let me use a finger space. What do you think? T and a. Oh, good job. She likes to, oh, here's my, this is where my paper separates. I'll just squoosh it in there. Squoosh. I just made up that word. Squish. I'll squish it in there. She likes to sit. Sit. All right, so what does it start with? S. Good job. Lowercase s, remember. S-I. Good job. Sit. T. I know you're answering me at home because I know you're following right along with me. You guys are awesome. I miss talking back and forth with you in the classroom, but I really do feel like I'm talking to you right now. And this is amazing. All right. So she likes to sit on. Ah, mm. What do you think? This is one of our words too, I believe. Oh, ah, mm. I'm good. She likes to sit on the. This was one of your first popcorn words way back at the beginning of the year, which seems so long ago. How do we spell the? T-H-E. Good job. I'm going to swoop down here. If you, if you don't have enough room ever, if you think you're going to squish it, just go to the next line. Oop, just move my screen. All right, so T and then an H and an E. She likes to sit on the, ooh, last word, deck. All right, leave a finger space, deck, d, a, k. All right, so d, d, what do we think? D, all right, make sure you're making the right one. Not B, but D, D has a doorknob first. And you can remember, it's actually a C that turns into a D when you're writing it. So first I start with a C. And then it goes straight up to Skyline and makes a D. Good job. She likes to sit on the deck. D, A, which vowel says A, E. Good job. D, A, K. Oh, no. Not again. K. Where is it? K. Or K. Which one goes at the end of the word deck? CK is right. If it's a k at the end of the word, most likely it's CK. Good job. So a C and a K. Let me read it one more time. Make sure I didn't miss any words. She likes to sit on the deck. And how do I end a sentence? With a period. Good job. It's not a question, so I wouldn't put a question mark. Good job. Now, let's make sure we also did all the proper um, pieces, I should say, that we need to do when we're writing a sentence. Did we use an uppercase letter at the beginning? We did. Good job. Did you use finger spaces in between all your words? Yes. Good job. Did you end your sentence with a punctuation, which means a period, a question mark, an exclamation point? Yes, I did. Well, then guess what? We did amazing. Good for you guys at home. It was awesome working with you today. I left your parents with some nonsense words today if you want to do them at home, if you have some more time. If not, you did awesome today, and this was a long video, so you did fantastic. 
I can't wait to see you guys again soon. Have a great day.